Hey Booktube, how's it going? Check these. Yeah, somebody got new glasses. I actually got two pairs of new glasses. Ones are bifocals for everyday use, and then these are for computer and reading. And I've had them for like 20 minutes, and I already scratched the bifocals because I dropped them. <sighs> Yeesh. Oh yay. Fred is blocking the the Zizo. What do you call that owl? The lesser known Which one? When I go <laughs> The lesser spotted breathy owl. The lesser spotted breathy owl? Yeah. Yeah. The lesser spotted Zo. Fred's blocking it. It's okay, bud. You'll still be able to hear my belly. Good job. Good job, Fred. Alright, so, um, in all actuality, I have something to talk to you guys about um, that isn't about my glasses, my fat head, or anything else. <clears throat> it's about Almeric. Um, I wonder who did this. Does it say who did the cover on here? Probably won't. Um, nope, it doesn't. Um, but anyway, um, so this um, was originally serialized in Weird Tales magazine in 1939 and was released as a book in the 60s. Now, um, this is a UK edition from Sphere Books. Um, but I brought that up that, uh, that this was written, um, or published in Weird Tales in 1939 because Robert E. Howard committed suicide in 1936. So, um, there is a bit of controversy as Zoe says um controversy around um this book and I didn't know that I, I have so much to talk to you guys about about this book um this is one of those books that I don't know obviously you haven't but I kind of thought that I had already read it um I'm like, I'm Rick, I remember, oh yeah, I think I read that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have, um, actually I have like three different ebook versions of this that I got off of, um, over the years, <laughs> off of, um, probably archive.org and Project Gutenberg and stuff. Um, but this edition, um, again, thank you, Adam, came from Adam, and, um, the funny thing was, the other day, and I was saying how um, I picked this up, and I was just like, oh my gosh. And he's like, I can't believe, out of all those books, that's the first one you picked up and started going through. Seriously, I picked it up, and I just read, like, um, the foreword just a little bit. And then I was like, oh man. And then all of a sudden, I was in, like, the third chapter, and I was like, oh man. And then... Today I pick it up again, and my eyes started burning, um, and they hurted, but, um, but yeah, um, and then I finished it, and it's back. Uh, we have a fly that is making us go crazy. It is really just getting under our skin. So anyway, I have a lot to talk about this book. Um, probably more than you've ever wanted to know about this book. So, um, obviously this was inspired by Edgar Rice Burroughs. So the first thing I have to say is if you ever in reading, um, uh, Princess of Mars, um, or even, um, some of the Tarzan books, we're just like, oh man, this is so good, but I just wish it went a little further. I just wish Edgar Rice Burroughs 
would start cleaving skulls and pulling out people's hearts and um, smashing their jaws and blah, blah, blah. This is the book. This is the book you need to read. Um, this is um, on the floor. Ah! Um, but yeah, this is um, super, super violent. Um, it's ridiculous in some ways. Um, this book will not change the course of social history by any means. But it is so entertaining. And it... Just right off the bat, it has the same kind of um, thing that an Edgar Rice Burroughs book has. Where in Edgar Rice Burroughs books, the especially the John Carter books, um, you have Edgar Rice Burroughs narrating as if everything that you're about to hear is true because John Carter came to him and told him blah, 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 blah. Same thing happens here, um, and it's a little, it's not silly, but it's like, this guy's like, I'm a doctor, I'm not going to tell you how I sent him to this planet, and I'm not going to tell you how I talked to him after he got there, but just know that it happened, so suck it. Um, but it's about this guy named Esau Cairn, which um, is just one of his better names, I think, that he came up with. Um, but it's about this guy who is just so smart and so intellectual, yet such a badass and such a physical specimen that he constantly <clears throat> has to like reel himself in because he knows that he could accidentally kill people, um, with just how badass he is all the time <laughs> until one day he accidentally kills somebody. <clears throat> ish and um the town's coming for him and he runs into this guy's house and he's like oh why don't i send you to some other planet that probably can sustain life but no one's been there before and he's like uh yeah because these guys are gonna lynch me and kill me so that sounds fine so um he sends him to this planet where um, the planet is called Amuric, um, and he sends him there, and all the dudes are, like, these big, <laughs> buffed-out, ape-like, hairy dudes, and all the chicks are, like, smooth, alabaster skin, drop-dead gorgeous, wearing barely nothing, um... So, obviously, this is, like, the coolest planet that ever happened, okay? And, um, so, the story is, is that there's these two warring tribes of these ape-like people. Um, Koth and Kor. I think I wrote it down here. Koth and Kor, yeah. K-H-O-R. Um, but while this is going on, there is still another group of people um, who were who live in the rock faces-ish down by the equator, which they call the um the girdle, because they've never been beyond the girdle. Um of these um basically these winged beings um, that are cannibals and fly through the air and come and eat you and all sorts of shit. Anyway, um, so it's just, it's super fast-paced, um, like... It's fast-paced like a typical planetary romance book that you would find. Um, but it still has... I want to say flowery or purpley um, turns of phrase. But Edgar Rice Burroughs has that too. But for those of you who know Edgar Rice Burroughs and know Robert E. Howard, you know that... Where one is flowery, one's 
a different kind of flowery. Um, but it just feels so right. It's like the first like couple chapters are very survival um, because he just ends up in this place and there's just creatures and all sorts of crap trying to eat him and he's just trying to not die. So there is that um, element that I think... I'm trying to think if there's any John Carter books that... I think all of them, and even the Pellucidor books, like, people get found pretty much right away when they're, um, when they appear. But, uh, I don't know, it was just, it was really fun, it was really cool, and, um, the best bit is, is that when he gets found by one of these, like, ape dudes, um, the, the ape guy's like, oh, because everyone speaks English. And so that's kind of weird. But then there's a point where he says, like, I know what they're saying isn't English, but yet I understand it like it is English. So I feel like even though at one point earlier on in the book, he's like, oh, yeah, everyone speaks English. But then after a little bit later, when he's hearing people talking, he's like, so maybe they're not speaking English, but somehow I just know how to speak their language and that kind of makes more sense. I mean, we're talking about a guy who was basically teleported to another planet. So why are we arguing about language? Language? Anyway, so the guy says to him, are you a man or a woman? And he's like, I answered by smashing his damn head open. I'm speaking um, not verbatim, obviously. And he's like, oh no, my temper got the best of me again. It's just like the way this guy is, it's so funny because he's super like short fused and like, that's his, that's his like only weakness. But at the same time, every time his temper gets the best of the situation, like there aren't repercussions from it. He still, destroys whatever the hell he's going to go beat the crap out of, and it's fine. So it just, it cracked me up. I was just like, oh my gosh, are you a man or a woman? I answered by ripping his damn throat out, as you do. Um, so it was just awesome. So anyway, <clears throat> the fun stuff about this, though, is as I was reading it, I started noticing some similarities um, in here. Basically, um, I guess I could just go down the list right now. Um, Thak is the god of these like ape-like people. And if you've read a lot of Conan, you'll know that Thak is the man-ape from Rogues in the House. Which is funny because it's almost like Thak is the same as the people that he's with. It's, it's just kind of weird. Um, they t talk about Thog, and Thog's from the Slithering Shadow. Um, Koth um, is in the Conan. Like, it's a... Not a city, but like a area in um, Hyboria. Um, and then you have all of these... Um, there's Yaga, which is a place, and the Yagas, who um, are the, like, winged people. Um, but the thing about this is... <clears throat> um, okay, so they're called the Yagas, um, and Yaga on Euthla by the river Yog in the land of Yag. Um, and in Tower of the Elephant, there's Yara the Sorcerer, um, and Yag, Kosha, and Yuga, um, and the planet that um, the little elephant dude is from is Yag. So there's all of these like very similar terms and, um, it was just kind of, 
exciting because we don't know exactly when this was written. We just know that it was turned in to Weird Tales um, for publication in 1939. So this could have been written like before and probably was actually when you think about it. Um, Because let me see. Princess of Mars, I think, was 1913. So this could have been like one of the first um, kind of big things he was working on. Um, I'm sure there were other um, Barsoom books written in the 20s and 30s. Um, I'd have to do some research on that. But um, I don't know how in vogue um, Barsoom would have been that much later um, as opposed to um, right around when um, Princess of Mars, like the first three novels and Tarzan and all that stuff was coming out. Um, So it might have been a bigger deal earlier on. Um, And two, I don't know when books of those were published other than them being published in the pulps. So... Robert E. Howard might have only had, like, copies of all story and stuff like that that had these stories in it um, to read from. So you don't know. Um, Other things, um, Yasmina is um, the evil queen of it. Um, And Yasmina, um, with... Is it with an I... Yeah, with an I, um, Yasmina, because um, in the book it's two E's, um, but in the Conan story, People of the Black Circle, there's Yasmina, but um, Yasmina with two E's is also in the El Borak story, the daughter of um, Ehrlich Khan. So there's all sorts of these um, little nods to other stuff that he's done, but this could have been where all those nods came from. Which is pretty exciting. Um, But when Weird Mass decided they were going to put this story out, they, um, Farnsworth Wright, who was the editor of Weird Tales, um, put a thing out saying, hey guys, next month we're getting another Robert E. Howard story. Um, And what Farnsworth Wright's little blurb was was that we have the first draft of this and then um, half of a revised second draft. And with that, um, I put this together so you can have the complete story of Elmeric. Now, a lot of people have said over the years that more likely than not, a certain guy named um, Otis Albert Klein probably wrote this book and then tried to sell it to Weird Tales as a Robert E. Howard book. And if you guys have heard that name before or heard that name before come out of my mouth, it was probably during um, me talking about... I can't remember what the book was called now, but I have this biography of Edgar Rice Burroughs and it talks about how um, Otis Albert Klein was... Um, probably the most successful, um, what do you call it? Uh, ripper offer, rip off artist, mimicker of planetary romance that, um, Edgar Rice Burroughs was doing. So since this is a planetary romance story, very closely aligned with Edgar Rice Burroughs, Otis Albert Klein um, may be writing this and turning it in as a Robert E. Howard story almost makes sense because Otis Albert Klein was also um, Robert E. Howard's literary agent. So he did have all of Robert E. Howard's stuff after Robert E. Howard died. But there is a video on the YouTubes, okay? on the YouTubes of a mathematician who I can't remember what the actual science is called, but he uses this type of math 
to determine who wrote this book. If it was Robert E. Howard, if it was um, Otis Albert Klein, if it was Farnsworth Wright, if it was Henry um, Kutner, if it was, uh, oh man, was it Eric Bender? Is that his name? He just goes down a list of all the like potential suspects of who could have written this book. And then with the uses of certain words, <clears throat> he puts all this into a computer with um, this manuscript and other works of Robert E. Howard's, other works of Otis Albert Klein, um, other works of Farnsworth Wright, and blah, 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 to try to see who more likely than not, based off of the words, oh, what does he call them? Foundational words? Words like the and, and um, I, the, my, words that people wouldn't try to mimic if they were trying to ape somebody's writing. Ape was the word I was looking for earlier. So, because in his video, he was like saying like, um, when I write this, I might say, um, the fork to the left of the plate, but you might say the fork on the left of the plate and little things like that start showing up in your work. And there are words that you will repeat because you are who you are kind of thing. And so by taking these words that most people wouldn't ever think about, you can go through and see um, how often certain words are used. And he has all these graphs and things. It's really cool. But let me tell you, hopefully I'll remember to put a link to it in this video. But I seriously almost lost my mind because I found that video this morning and I was like uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I had one of my earbuds in and I was watching it on my phone and the guy who introduces them is on a microphone talking and then um, they're like okay and so here's uh, Dr. Uh, Dan Look I think is what his name is and He's like, okay, I'm not going to use the microphone. I'm mic'd. I, I just don't want to throw my hands up in the air. And he puts the mic down, and then I can't hear him anymore. And I was like, what the... F and I was all pissed off. And I was, like, looking everywhere for this video. I was looking in the comments, seeing if anyone's like, how come the audio stops working when he starts talking? And then I was like, wait a second. Two mics. If they didn't bounce this recording, they might have done left and right. And I just have one earbud in. So I put the other earbud in, and he started talking. And I was like, holy crap. Now, that story might sound very boring to you, but this was like almost an hour of my morning, me trying to suss this out. So I was very proud of myself for doing it. Um, <laughs> but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll try to remember to link the video. It's super interesting. And this is the kind of thing that makes me want to go to the Robert E. Howard days that they have every year. Because they have all these speakers come talking about amazing slash ridiculous shit that, like, me and maybe four other people on BookTube would find interesting. And it, But, like, it's just like, dude, this guy... Like, should I tell you what the guy found out? Basically, he found out that Robert E. Howard pretty much wrote it. Um, there is a letter that surfaced, I guess it's been a couple years ago now, where Farnsworth Wright was um, talking to someone else. I can't remember who he was talking to. I think it was in that video. Or did I read that somewhere? I don't know, but he said that he himself um, revised a couple lines because a lot of people hate the ending of Almeric. And um, to me, not like all of Edgar Rice Burroughs' works, but like a lot of them, it ends like a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. But I'm trying to figure out, because to me, that would say to me that this book was probably written way earlier in Howard's career before he um, kind of found what he liked, you know, before he got that weird tales. Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Before he realized exactly what Weird Tales wanted. Because before that, he had um, Phoenix on the Sword and the Scarlet Citadel. I think those were the first two Conan stories he sold to Weird Tales. But then after that, he realized, oh, if I just have a like a new location each time with a damsel in distress and a supernatural monster that Conan has to fight, um, they're going to take everything I send to him. So pretty much the what people call the middle period of Conan stuff are, is very formulaic and it all ends the same way for the most part. So I think that this probably was written before a lot of that. Because, too, Howard only wrote four novels. Out of all the stuff he's written, he's only written four novels. Um, Almeric is one. Um, Hour of the Dragon, which is a Conan novel that he wrote for um, the European market. Um, not thinking it would ever really be released here, so he kind of aped himself, if that makes sense. He took a bunch of stuff out of other Conan stories and made a novel out of it. Um, and then uh, the Breckenridge... Is it Ellis? Breckenridge Ellis? Um, Western, a gent from Bear Creek. And then the El Borak um, Three-Bladed Doom. Other than that, everything he wrote was uh, short stories. So I'm wondering if he wrote this way early in his career. Like, before he actually was having a career. Like, when he was just learning to write and wanting to tell a story kind of thing. Um, like, as a writer, and I'm sure a lot of you are writers too, or at least have wanted to be a writer, so maybe you have a unfinished novel that you've written like two-thirds of, or a first draft of and never went back to. I have. I'm sure you have. So that would make sense. And then even um, when you're doing other stuff, the last thing you want to do is go back to a story you wrote a hundred years ago that wasn't very good in the first place, that needs a lot of work. You'd rather work on new stuff. So maybe that's why this kind of got lost um, in the shuffle, I guess. So, um, I don't know. It's a really interesting video. I basically ruined it for you. But um, if you like looking at pictures of graphs, you should definitely go back and watch the video. Um, but yeah, Almeric is a definite pick up and read. Um, if you like planetary romance, if you like Edgar Rice Burroughs, um, if you want a more violent Tarzan or something like that, this is definitely what you need to read. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to go. Bye-bye. Let me know down below what you think.